Hello and welcome to this short webinar and introduction to our program on heart and brain health for head teachers. My name is Maria Brosnan and I'm hosting the webinar for you today. I'm the founder and managing director of Pursuit Wellbeing. I'm a health and wellbeing specialist with over 30 years experience and I'm a coach and a counsellor and an author and this is my partner Dr Carla Stanton. She's a GP and functional medicine doctor and most lately in the last five years or so she's been working as a specialist in the heart and heart rate variability and I'll explain a lot more about that as we go through the program. So in this short presentation I'm going to share the good news and the bad news very briefly focusing on the bad news about health and well-being for head teachers and school leaders. Um, I'm going to share a little bit about our research after working with hundreds of head teachers especially since the pandemic. I'm going to share the three key measures of your heart health and they might not be what you think. We're certainly not going to be talking about cholesterol or weight or exercise regime. So I'm sure you're going to be interested in this. It's very new and unique information about your heart health. Um, I'll share some information about our training, including a live demonstration of the technology that we use. And I'll take you through a sample module so you really get a flavor of the program in case that might be something you're interested in. And at the end of this short presentation, I'm going to share a special gift with you about staff training that could save you hundreds of pounds. So let's take a look for a moment at what we know and start with the bad news. And I'm not going to focus on this for long, but we know that 89% of head teachers are chronically stressed. That means waking up in the morning feeling stressed, you know, feeling stressed throughout the day, coming home, waking up in the middle of the night feeling stressed. It's a, it's a long term ongoing situation that you're facing. And I'm curious if, if you're experiencing this yourself. The second thing we know is that stress is an independent risk factor for coronary heart disease. And the third thing is that we know that coronary heart disease is the number one cause of death in the UK and globally. So this is not trivial. What we're talking about here, these factors combined paint a fairly concerning picture. And it certainly points to why around 59% of head teachers have considered leaving the profession in the last 12 months or thinking of that in the next 12 months. There are a lot of stressors in play at the moment, and I'm curious which of these you can relate to. Possibly many, if not all of them. So just take a moment and reflect. For many people lately, it's about relationships, difficult parent, parental relationships, staff, students. It feels like there's a lot of pressure on people and it's playing out uh, in a very difficult way for head teachers to manage these. And I'm sure that some of these stressors feel like they're intractable. Like this is just part of being a head teacher, that there's nothing you can do about this, that it's just part of the job. And so I want to just share this comment from James Newman. He's the head teacher at Epsom and Newell High School. And he said, it's one of the best things I've ever done, this training. It's completely changed me as a professional. And I want to really plant that seed right at the beginning of this webinar, that it is possible for you to feel a lot better and to have a sustainable career in headship. And here's another comment from Alex Russell. He's the CEO of the Bourne Education Trust. And he said, this training from Pursuit Wellbeing has been transformational for our school and system leaders. Improved wellbeing, reduced anxiety and a better impact in their respective roles has been reported across the board. And I'm curious if that would be something that you might benefit from. Improved wellbeing, feeling a, a less anxiety and a better impact in your role. We worked with almost all of the head teachers at the Bourne Education Trust and some of their central teams as well. So what's the solution? We believe, and I'm sure you do too, in the power of education. When you understand why you're doing something, it, it is a much more powerful incentive for you to actually do it. So we use the latest scientifically validated research and technology to help to, to help you understand exactly what's happening in your brain and your body when you're stressed. Most people report that this is the most interesting part of the program from them, that they've never thought of themselves or their health in this way before. So this is one of the key uh, of the three pillars of this program. The second one is that we use biofeedback technology and I will do a live demonstration of this shortly. You can see here from this image, it's a very lightweight wearable device and an application on your mobile phone or uh, iPad. The power of this is that when you're feeling stressed and we saw that 89% of heads are chronically stressed, it's very hard to be objective. 
you might not know actually are you in the danger zone are you in the safe zone like how do you even know how stressed you are so we use biofeedback technology to give you that information and to crucially help you notice when you are feeling really stressed what to do about it in the moment that it's happening and this effectively teaches you the off switch to the stress response in three minutes or less and the third thing is coaching. As a coach, I am a huge advocate for the power of coaching to bring people together. We work primarily in small groups to talk about these things and to, to work through some of the issues. And, and that's another key piece of feedback that we get from colleagues. How powerful it is to hear that you're not the only one that's feeling like you're feeling. So I want to share the three key measures of your heart health and in fact what we measure and what we teach you to measure when we do this training. So the first is your resting heart rate. The normal healthy range is between 60 and 80 beats per minute and it looks a little bit like this. You can see up here on the left hand axis um, 70, 80, 90 beats per minute see up here so this the average of this person is a little bit high it's probably just above 80 beats per minute so we'll teach you what that looks like and how to measure that the second thing is something known as your heart rate variability and if you have a smartwatch or a wearable device you might be familiar with this term but you might not be familiar with quite how important it is to your health so this just means the beat to beat difference in your heart rate and you can test it right now uh, using your fingers just take your pulse so just put two fingers underneath your thumb and just slow down your breathing for a moment and breathe in through your nose and out through your nose just a little bit slower and deeper than normal and i want you to just observe the pace of your heart rate so as you're breathing in, just get a feel for that. And as you're breathing out and just see if you can observe a difference between the in breath and the out breath. And just as you're doing that, I'll tell you the punchline. As you breathe in, your heart rate naturally speeds up. And as you breathe out, it naturally slows down. That's uh, it's a very healthy, naturally occurring phenomenon that happens for absolutely everybody. We think that our heart beats like a metronome, but it doesn't at all. It's con continuously speeding up and slowing down. And as it turns out, your heart rate variability is the key indicator of the health of your heart. And it looks a little bit like this. So you can see this person is breathing in and their heart rate is speeding up a little bit. As they breathe out, it slows down a little bit. But you can see here there's a very small variation, very low heart rate variability and low heart rate variability very particularly is the key indicator of poor heart health. And in fact, all kinds of health issues can be seen from this measure alone. And to compare that with somebody with very high heart rate variability, so you can see it's going from about 55 beats per minute to well over 90 beats per minute. So there's a lot of variability as this person is breathing in. You can see here, big breath here is about, you know, 30 beats per minute difference between the in breath and the out breath. But I'm sure you can see from this image as well that it looks quite chaotic, a little bit like um, you know, an earthquake trace or something like that. So this is the third thing that we measure. It's the pattern that this heart rate variability makes. And this is known as your cardiac coherence. And another way of looking at that, it's the regularity of your heart rhythm. And a healthy high cardiac coherence looks something like this. So you can see this person is taking a breath in and a breath out. So it's really smooth, makes a lovely pattern here. And this is what we teach you how to do on this training. And again, these three things combined, your heart rate, your heart rate variability, and your cardiac coherence, paint a picture of the health of your heart that's more accurate than pretty well anything else. So I just want to share a little bit of the data from our research. When we work with people, we would expect their heart rate in, uh, variability to improve, but we're also looking at these other stress-related symptoms. We do a clinical uh, pre and post uh, assessment with every person that we work with. And you can see here that we look at, uh, we look at 29 key measures of your heart health, and in fact, your, your entire well-being. And we look at things like how tired you are, which is extremely common any issues with sleeplessness, anxiety, depression, hopelessness, and through to physical pain. And before our pilot, um, most people's were very high and every single one of these measures improved. I've just 
pulled out 13 of them to show you here. And as we've continued to measure these um, really unpleasant stress-related symptoms, we've noticed that the improvement is getting more and more, more marked. So that's something that you can benefit from as well. Uh, I'll just share this little uh, testimony from Dom Mulholland, who's the, the head teacher at Mild May Junior School. I'm not going to lie, I was reluctant to be signed up for this program. For context, I'm a pre primary head teacher with reason to be concerned about my heart health, and I wasn't keen to know the worst about my heart. This, however, is not what this program has been about. I've come away with a greater understanding of what impacts my heart health and my emotional state, and a greater capacity to redress the balance when things are stressful. It's been enlightening. And I'll just tell you a little bit about Dom. He was invited to join this program by the CEO of his multi-academy trust because he was concerned about, about Dom's health. And Dom declared very early on, he came and sat down in a kind of a grumpy way, he won't mind me telling you this, but he said that he'd suffered with depression for over 10 years and he felt that there was nothing that anybody could do to help him. And I'm wondering if you might be feeling the same, you know, with all of the stressors that you're dealing with and perhaps personal issues that are happening with your life that you might be thinking that there is nothing that you can do to make things feel better. And I just want to share, that's why I shared Dom's quote with you, because he was able in four sessions, we just worked together four times, and to learn how to use this technology, he said he felt better. He came actually to a session and said, uh, you fixed me. And I said, I'm not able to do that. You fix yourself, but with some guidance from us. And he said his depression completely lifted and I work with him as a coach now and he still feels uh, really on top of the world. So I just wanted to share that testimonial with you to give you a bit of an idea that it is possible for you to feel a lot better as a head teacher as you work in your role. So now I'll give you a short demonstration of the technology. So I'm just going to clip this device to my ear. So you start to see my pulse coming in along the bottom here. It's always reassuring to see that. And as you saw in the image I shared earlier, this is my heart rate here. So 60, 70, 80 beats per minute, 90. And you can see that it's a little bit irregular because I'm talking and I'm focusing on sharing this information with you. So what I'm going to invite you to do is to join me in seeing if I can improve my cardiac coherence and heart rate variability in just a couple of breaths. So if you follow along here, you can see this breath pacer and I'm going to stop talking for about 30 seconds or so and together we're going to follow this. So breathing in as it's going up and breathing out as it's going down. And if you can, breathe through your nose. And if it's a little bit too fast for you, then don't worry about that. Just breathe at a pace that's comfortable for you. So I'm going to stop talking and let's see what happens. So I'll stop sharing that now. And very quickly, you can see how my cardiac coherence changes. But my question to you is how do you feel after taking, you know, four breaths together? Do you feel a little bit calmer and more settled in your body? So this is what we teach you to do in three minutes or less. And you can see here in probably one breath, my coherence changed remarkably. I want to share just a little bit of information about new research on brain health. And this was led by a team of researchers led by Mara Martha, and she's the professor of gerontology and psychology at the University of Southern California. And they carried out independent research because Mara was observing throughout her career that older people 
could either have uh, very high levels of anxiety and depression, so strong emotional and mental issues, and or uh, Alzheimer's and dementia. And so she was looking to see what are the variables, what are the things that make the biggest difference to these people. And she noticed that it was heart rate variability. If they had higher heart rate variability, they were much less likely to experience those difficult emotional and mental symptoms, but also the physical symptoms of Alzheimer's and dementia. So Mara set up a program with her colleagues using the, the technology that we use to improve people's heart rate variability. And they noticed that there were measurable benefits on the brain health, structure and function. And these benefits have been shown to help protect against premature aging and dementia. And I won't go into any more detail about this here, but I just wanted to drop this in to let you know that using this, uh, the training that we help you do to improve your heart rate variability will have a measurable impact on your brain health as well as your heart health. So I'm going to share a sample module from our training program now. And before I do, I just want to share this comment from uh, one of the heads that we worked with. And she said, before I signed up to Heart Health, I believed that stress was part of the job and I just had to get used to it and accept that I would crash every holiday. And I wonder if you experience that too. Since learning through the program, I have a completely different mindset. I understand far more about stress and what I can do to proactively manage my response in the moment. And I'd recommend this to all leaders and give themselves the gift of this learning. So Joe very beautifully points out exactly what I'm going to demonstrate to you here. So on this uh, graph here, you can see on the left hand side, on the y axis, we're looking at your performance. And by performance, I just mean your ability to do what you want and need to do throughout your work day. We could include your personal life, but for now, we'll just focus on your work. And along the bottom, we're going to look at the level of challenge you're experiencing again here from low to high. And this red dotted line represents time. So this could be a day, a week, an academic term or an academic year. But just for the purposes of this demonstration, let's focus on the first academic half term from September. So it's, we've broken it down into four zones here, A, B, C and D. So if you think about just late August, the last few days of August as you're starting to think about coming back to work, you probably feel a little bit of healthy pressure. That might be, you know, your mind is starting to shift out of holiday mode into work mode and healthy pressure actually improves our performance. And you can see here in zone A, the, the dotted line, your performance is starting to improve. And this is as you're starting to uh, prepare, you're doing some inset training, you're welcoming the new children or students into your school. And gradually your performance is improving as you're getting kind of back into your stride. This might last until, you know, within a couple of weeks, everybody settled in, the new students are settled in, new staff members, everybody more or less knows where they need to be and what they're doing. And this is a period of optimal performance or your peak performance. And this is where you're at your most efficient and effective. And I'm sure you're very familiar with this state. Um, musicians or athletes would call this being in the zone or being in flow, but it's when you feel like you're more or less on top of things. And this is zone B. Unfortunately, we never know what life has in store for us and something can typically happen that shifts our perception. And when that happens, it tips us into zone C. And this is known as hyperreactivity. We could think of it as being in the fight or flight uh, state. And this is where you can notice two things. Firstly, that your performance is starting to decline, but not so much that what people would notice. But what you might be starting to feel yourself is feeling overwhelmed. You know, you might be feeling anxious, just feeling like you've got so many plates spinning and you're probably feeling worried or frightened that you might drop the wrong one. So this is where um, when our perception changes, it's usually because we feel we don't have enough of a particular resource. So that could be um, money. You know, you want to buy in uh, new resources into the school or your budget is extremely tight and you don't have enough money. You might feel like you don't have enough time. This is virtually universal. Everybody feels that there is not enough time in the day to do everything that you need to do. The third one might be energy. You might just be feeling exhausted. 
and you don't have the energy to do all of the things that you need to do to solve all these problems. And this perception change could be one great big thing like, you know, the Ofsted call or a global pandemic or something really huge happening in your school, perhaps, you know, a death of a colleague or a parent in your school, something really big. But typically, it's the stacking up of lots of smaller things. So it could be an HR issue, could be a safeguarding issue. You might have staff leaving and it's hard, difficult to recruit new staff. It could be something happening at home, a health issue at home, something happening with your own children or parents or a loved one, your own health. It could be lots of things. And this is what we would much more typically see, this stacking up that feels overwhelming and relentless. And this is the perception change that tips us into zone C. None of us are superhuman. None of us can keep, you know, keep on top of this and feel uh, like this is manageable. And if we can't get help, if a good night's sleep, if a, a, a conversation with a coach or a friend doesn't get us back into zone B, this is what tips us into zone D. And this is where we feel emotional and physical exhaustion. And I'm sure you've all experienced this yourself as you're coming towards the end of term. So imagine we're coming up to the half term now. And very often, I'm sure you will have experienced this, just this feeling of just, you know, counting down two weeks to go, one week to go, a few days, counting down, counting down. And then you finally limp into the holidays, as Joe said in that previous quote, feeling exhausted, often getting sick, your friends and family know just to leave you alone for a few days until you recover. Often when you go away on a holiday, you just completely crash out. And this, again, if we're not able to deal with this, it will lead to the damage and breakdown of our health. And this is what stress is, right? Uh, and the other thing I want to point out here is look at what's happening to your performance, right? It's going down and down. And I'm sure you've experienced that awful feeling of just like you're wading through treacle. You've got to get these things done and it's taking you ages. And there is a good amount of research that shows that you are at least three times less effective in zone D than you are in zone B. So if we put an hourly rate on that, a task that would take you an hour to do in zone B would typically take you three hours to do in zone D. So my f one piece of advice from this short webinar together is make sure that you prioritize rest and sleep. So in the evening when you feel tempted to get the laptop out and to just work on that, you know, policy document or report for the governors, I'd urge you to prioritize rest and sleep because tomorrow it will take you a fraction of the time to do the same thing. So my question to you now is what zone are you in? And it will depend very much on what time of the term you're watching this in. But I'm curious, what zone would you find yourself in now? And it relates so strongly to term time, you know, the academic half term. And it's almost universal in education. When I talk with leaders and I've done this presentation many, many hundreds of times with uh, with people in a room and almost Without exception, people would say they're in zone C or zone D. And my question to you, if that's where you find yourself in, is that okay with you to feel like you're in zone C or D, that you're feeling stressed almost all the time in term time? And I'd again like to um, invite you to consider the possibility that it's yeah, that it's possible to feel a lot more resilient and that's what we teach you and we have a very specific definition for resilience but not so you can grit in and tough it out and hang in there a bit longer it's so you can recognize when you're in this state when you're coming to this state where you're kind of tipping over into zone c you recognize when that's happening and ask yourself the question what happens here and what can I do about it? And this is where we focus our work for you. Recognize these changes and give you very strategic tools to get you back into zone B before you bottom out in zone D and feel exhausted or sick by the end of the term. If you've got any questions about this, please do drop me a note. I'll, I'll share my details at the end of the presentation, but um, I hope this has been helpful for you just to get a picture of this. This is almost universal with school leaders and head teachers and CEOs of maths that I work with.
So just share a couple more comments before I tell you a little bit about our training and offer you this special gift. This is from Penny Alford and she's the, C uh, the Chief Education Officer at Bourne and she says, participating in these sessions has made me think and act differently. I now recognize my physical and emotional responses to stress and have a toolkit to draw on to respond. And this from Rebecca Williams, the sessions were not only fascinating, but also gave me extremely effective tools for managing stress and well-being. So if you're interested in working together, it's £650 per participant for four two-hour group sessions, and that could be online or in person, it depends where you are in the country. And it's £224 for the Inner Balance sensor and app that I showed you before. And that's a total of £874 per participant. And this is for all of the training, for the Inner Balance technology and for all course materials and video content. So we have videoed everything that we'll be teaching you live so you can go back and refer to it uh, if you'd like to revise that or if you would like to um, share it with colleagues on your SLT. One thing I'd like to offer is a satisfaction guarantee. As far as I know, we're the only health and well-being providers that offer you your money back on the training portion of the program. If you do all of the training and you do the practices that we invite you to do and you feel like you really didn't get any value from it, I am more than happy to offer you our money back. And I will say that not one person has ever asked us for that. And also that 100% uh, of our participants would say that our training has met or exceeded expectations as well. So my gift to you is the staff health and wellbeing training. So we've created an adapted version of this and it's all on video. So you can watch it on demand with your staff inset training, you know, twilight sessions or whenever it suits you. So this includes all of the course materials and video content, a complete facilitator's guide. So you don't need to even think about how you're laid out. We guide you through that with, uh, with documents for that and a free app for all the participants to use. HeartMath, who developed the technology, have developed a free version, which we encourage you to use with staff. We encourage you to use the Inner Balance so Dr. Carla and I can check your, uh, your data and feedback to you. But this program is 495 pounds, but we would like to offer this to you for free when you join our Head Teachers Heart Health Program. So for clarity, when you sign up to do the program, we will offer you the staff health and wellbeing training for free. And that's normally valued at £495 if you join us in the next seven days. So thank you very much for joining me on the webinar today. I hope you found it interesting. I hope you've got some valuable information that you can take away and use and share with your colleagues. And I really look forward to hearing from you and hopefully working together very soon.